compound. What is this strange looking object? Can you guess what it is? It's a model of a certain type of matter. Some types of matter are elements or pure substances that can be broken down into simpler substances. Many other types of matter are compounds. The model here represents a compound. The compound it represents is carbon dioxide, a gas which you exhale every time you breathe. What is a compound? A compound is a unique substance that forms when two or more elements combine chemically. For example, the compound carbon dioxide forms when one atom of carbon, gray in the model here, combines with two atoms of oxygen, shown as red in this model. Another example of a compound is water. It forms when two hydrogen atoms combine with one oxygen atom. What is a chemical compound? Let us learn what a chemical compound really is. Click on the titles listed here. Atoms, molecules, elements and compounds. When two or more elements bond together chemically, they form a new substance with its own properties. This combination of elements is called a compound. Water is a compound made of hydrogen and oxygen. Carbon dioxide, which is what you release when you exhale, is a compound made of carbon and oxygen. Most substances around you are compounds or mixtures of compounds. All compounds are made up of molecules. A molecule is the smallest part of the compound that has all the properties of that compound. For example, a molecule of water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Let's compare compounds and mixtures. Combining elements to form a compound is different from just mixing elements together. In a mixture of iron filings and sulfur, for example, each element holds on to its original properties. You can separate the mixture easily by dragging a magnet through it, attracting all the iron filings. But if you heat the mixture, a chemical reaction takes place that bonds the elements together. Not only does the new compound look different, but it also has no magnetic properties. Thus, compounds do not possess the properties of the elements which they are composed of. Separating the chemical compounds Unlike mixtures, which are fairly easy to separate, the strong bonds in a compound can be broken only by chemical means. By using electricity, we can break the bonds holding the elements hydrogen and oxygen present in the compound water. When an electric current passes through two tubes full of water, it breaks the tight bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms in each water molecule. Oxygen atoms bubble up to fill the blue balloon, while hydrogen atoms fill up the red balloon. There are two hydrogen atoms for every atom of oxygen in a water molecule H2O. Therefore, the red balloon fills up faster. Thus, when water is electrolyzed, oxygen gas is formed at the anode, while hydrogen gas is formed at the cathode. Energy changes take place when chemical compounds are broken down. Just a difference of one atom. The compounds displayed here may not look alike, but they are made of the same elements, iron and chlorine. The only difference between them is one atom. Ferrous chloride, FeCl2, has one atom of chlorine lesser than ferric chloride, FeCl3. The proportions of the elements present in a compound must remain constant, or else the compound changes into something else. Here's a question. How could a water molecule be represented? Well, 
we can use a similar model like we did for the one in carbon dioxide in the previous image to represent a water molecule such as seen here. Two things are true of all compounds. A compound always has the same elements in the same proportions. For example, carbon dioxide always has two atoms of oxygen for each atom of carbon, and water always has two atoms of hydrogen for each atom of oxygen. A compound always has the same composition throughout. For example, all carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and all water in the ocean have the same proportions of elements. Here's another question. How do you think the properties of compounds will compare with the properties of the elements that form them? Well, you might expect the properties of the compounds to be similar to the properties of the elements that make them up, but you'd actually be wrong. Properties of compounds. The properties of compounds are different from the properties of the elements that form them, sometimes extremely different. That's because elements within a compound combine and become entirely different substance with its own unique properties. Do you put salt on your food? Table salt is a compound, a compound of sodium and chloride, which means it contains the elements sodium and chlorine, as shown in this figure. Sodium is a solid that reacts explosively with water, and chlorine is a poisonous gas but you put them together and yet it forms table salt, something that's safe and harmless and you put on your french fries. In fact, it's actually a necessary component of a human diet. Structure of compounds. Compounds like sodium chloride form structures called crystals. A crystal is a rigid framework of many ions that lock together in a repeating pattern. Ions are electronically charged forms of atoms. You can see a crystal of sodium chloride in the figure here. It's made up of many sodium and chloride ions, and they're arranged in a rigid framework. Compounds such as carbon dioxide and water form molecules instead of crystals. A molecule is the smallest particle of a compound that still has the compound's properties. It consists of two or more atoms bonded together. You saw models of both carbon dioxide and water earlier in this video. So let's summarize this section. A compound is a unique substance that forms when two or more elements combine chemically. A compound always has the same elements in the same proportions. The properties of compounds may be very different from the properties of the elements that form them. And some compounds form rigid frameworks called crystals. Other compounds form individual molecules. A molecule is the smallest particle of a compound that still has that compound's properties.